This one I saw on the train recently. 92.35% of all London Overground trains ran within five minutes of their scheduled time between the 4th of January 2015 and 31st of January 2015. What human being is looking at that and thinking, oh, didn't they do well? Surely we're all thinking, what kind of chaos reigned on the 1st, 2nd and 3rd of January? If you've had to exclude those from your figures, if they would have skewed the odds that much, this must have been pretty bloody bad, wasn't it? That's what this advert says to me, but the truth is, that's not really fair on the railway companies. It's not their fault. They are actually obliged to report their punctuality figures in 28-day periods. And that one just happened to end on January the 31st. The next ad would have said from February the 1st to the 28th, and that would have looked completely fine. And the next one would have said from March the 1st to the 28th, and that would have looked a bit weird. And then the next one would have said from the 29th of March to the 25th of April, and that would have looked batshit crazy. <laughs> This advert looks silly, but it is not their fault. The fault lies with months. Months are not a proper unit of time, are they? A month is either 28, 29, 30 or 31 days long. In common parlance, we talk about a month being four weeks long, but they're not. Only February is exactly four weeks long, and even then, that's only true three quarters of the time. 94% of months are longer than a month. We know exactly how many seconds in a minute, how many minutes in an hour, hours in a day, and days in a week. We even know exactly how many months in a year. But the months themselves are a mystery. They <laughs> chop and change. Let me give you an example, okay? Let's talk about something real, human pregnancy. Okay, we've all learned this all our lives, we all know. How many months are we told an average human pregnancy should last? Nine. Nine, very good. Nine months. Now, hands up if you are a parent. Okay, parents, how many weeks were you told, on average, your pregnancy would last? 40. 40 weeks is 10 bloody months, isn't it? <laughs> 10 months, we've been bilked our whole lives. You spend your whole life as a woman thinking if you get pregnant, it'll be nine months, and then you get there and you discover it's actually 10. You've been conned, haven't you? Let's look at the year. How many months are there in a year? 12. 12. Exactly. How many weeks are there in a year? 52. 52. Good. However, 12 months... Well, 12 times 4 is 48. And 52 minus 4 is 48. Doesn't take a genius to work out, we've got four extra weeks. And what do four weeks make? A month. There are actually 13 months in a year. We are being paid for 12 months' work, and we are doing 13 months' work a year. This is outrageous. This is absolutely outrageous. And I, I have a solution. I have reformed the calendar. <laughs> and I will tell you how I'm going to do it after this break of approximately 240 seconds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now before the break, I promised you a reform of our broken and deceptive Gregorian calendar. But let me be clear, it is not just the lack of rigour that I have issue with. I have another issue with months, a linguistic one. These are the months as we know them today. Take a look at the word October. Oct. Think of all the other words, you know, beginning with oct. <laughs> Octopus, octagon, octogenarian. Think of all the words you know, beginning with deck. Decade, decimal, decathlon. You don't have to be the sharpest linguist out there to realise that sept, oct, nov, dec represents seven, eight, nine, ten. And yet we've put them in positions nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> why has that happened? I'll tell you why that's happened. It's because of the bloody Romans. Before that, we used to have months called Quintilus and Sextilus. It used to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But then the Romans got all egotistical on us. They wanted to name two months after their emperors. They named months after Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar. Can you imagine the ego involved in naming a month after a human being? It's one thing naming it after a god. You know, you've got January after Janus. That's OK. Mars gives you March. That's OK. I mean, if you believe in a god, why wouldn't you want to venerate them by naming something as fundamental as a period of time after them? That makes sense. But not an actual human being. Get your egos out of the game. That is ridiculous. Well, they have confused things by naming July and August so, and then everything got moved around at a later date. So what we're going to do, we're going to correct this system. The first thing we're going to do is sort out the numbering, obviously. So let's call 
call that 7, 8, 9, 10, because they are called 7, 8, 9, 10. That's what they are. So if they're going to be 7, 8, 9, 10, it follows, does it not, that that becomes 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So if that's what the numbers are going to be now, let's move July and August down to there, and let's move January and February down to there. So now we've got all the same months in the same order, it's just the numbering is more appropriate. OK? That's easy. Now, let's remove the egotistical Romans from our calendar. Let's remove Julius Caesar, remove Augustus Caesar. Let's perform a Caesarean section on our calendar. <laughs> let's remove them completely and replace them with the months they replaced, Quintilus and Sextilus, which are now in the right place, five and six. That is the numbering sorted out. We've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, exactly where they should be. Now, obviously, is the time we introduce the 13th month, which, of course, will be Gormanuary. <laughs> now, what we've got there is 13 months of exactly 28 days long. Everything ticks over perfectly. March the 1st, New Year's Day, will always be a Sunday because nobody wants to go straight back to work on New Year's Day, do they? And it will always be a Sunday because of the order in the calendar. The first of every month will always be a Sunday. The second of every month will always be a Monday. And that means that New Year's Eve, the 28th of Gormanuary, will always be a Saturday. Now, it might have occurred to some of you, it might have occurred to some of you, that 13 times 28 is 364. And that means we've got a day spare. We can't force the year to only be 364 days long. The year is to do with the stars and the planets. So what we're going to do is, after Gormanuary, we're going to have an intermission. <laughs> It's one day long, it's not called Sunday, it's not called Monday, it's not called anything. It isn't a day of the week, it is just intermission. It is basically an extended New Year's piss-up. You can go out on New Year's Eve, you don't have to go back until the 1st of March, everything is fine, what happens in intermission stays in intermission. <laughs> and every fourth year, we have a two-day intermission, and we call both of those days intermission. That's all it is. That regulates everything. Everything flows in a very orderly fashion from that point on. We have talked previously on this show about the old 30 days hath September rhyme. I think we can all agree that this system improves upon that rhyme. The rhyme now goes 28 days hath March, April, May and June. All the rest have 28 too, because that's how long a month is. There you go. It's much, it's much, much easier. Much easier. I'm confident in this. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the PowerPoint down for a moment. I'm just going to say, any questions? Any questions about the system? Yes, sir. When are the bank holidays? The bank holidays. We have the same number of bank holidays as we do now. We spread them evenly throughout the year. Very easy. The only difference will be the people we won't let have a holiday are the ones who work in banks. <laughs> so an improvement on bank holidays right there. Right there. Good lady in the T-shirt. What if you're born on the 30th or the 31st of the month? Do you just move it along to the next month? You're asking about birthdays? Yeah, birthdays. Yeah, yeah, OK, I'm glad you asked. Uh, birthdays. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, let's use my birthday as an example, because everyone's birthday is going to change in this new system, right? I was born on March the 2nd, 1971. So the first thing you have to do is work out how many days into the year that was. So, for example, in me, it's quite easy. You know there's 31 days in January in the old system, uh, 28 days in February in both systems, and it wasn't a leap year, so there were just 28 days. 31 plus 28 plus the two days take you to the 2nd of March makes it the 61st day of the year. Then you map that onto the new calendar, OK? It's very easily done for this. Uh, 28 for March, 28 for April, that's 56. Uh, leaves five spare. So my new birthday becomes May the 5th. March the 2nd, 61st day of the year, is May the 5th. And you do that with every day. It's very simple. I've actually got a little guide to help you. Um, <laughs> This is, my, this is an old calendar, you know, using the current system, and I've mapped every day onto it, and lots of things are improved uh, by doing this. For example, you know, you want to keep all the nice holidays and festivals and little sort of uh, celebrations we have in life. Like April Fool's Day. We're not getting rid of April Fool's Day, but April the 1st is the 91st day of the year, and so in the new calendar, it becomes Saturday the 7th of June. And I think we, we can all agree it's going to be much easier to catch people out. Um, <laughs> knowing that, that's... That's better. Uh, November the 5th. Again, you don't want to move it to the new November the 5th because it wouldn't be getting dark early enough for November the 5th to make sense. So you keep it where it is, you just map it onto the new date. Uh, so, for example, if you just find November in the old calendar, November the 5th uh, would be the 309th day of the year, and so it now becomes Sunday the 1st of February uh, every time. And again, that's very easy to remember. You just use the rhyme, remember, remember the 1st of February. Uh, <laughs> 
So it's, it's just a simple process of mapping things on. That is true for every holiday, every festival going. Very easy. Oh, uh, we got one in, in the, towards the back there, yeah? Um, have you changed the star signs, and if so, what's the new 13th one? My advice to astrologers would be to just keep making it up as they always did. <laughs> um, there's no... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter for them. Yes, a uh, blonde lady down here? You do know that means there's going to be 13 Friday the 13th in the year. I do, yes. Every month has Every Friday, month the we'll Friday the 13th now. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> the thing is, if you have to go through 13 Friday the 13th every year from the day you're born until the day you die, you're going to get over it. It's called exposure therapy. <laughs> uh, yes, there's a man down here. What about uh, things that don't happen on a fixed day, like Easter or Chinese New Year? Easter, it isn't. You know, that's the thing. It moves around. It's a movable feast at this moment in time. In the new system, we will nail Easter down. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, we've, we've thought of everything. We really have. In fact, just looking through that, that calendar of the old system, which shows you how complicated it is, we've got a new calendar uh, and, and we'll have new merchandise to go with it. So, for example, you could get a calendar like this, right? The thing with this kind of calendar, now, every day is always the same day of the year. It's always a Sunday on March the 1st. We know that. The same system. So what we do with these calendars now, you produce them and they're wiped clean. <laughs> and then you've got one calendar for the rest of your life. That's less printing, less trees being killed. You can go anywhere. It doesn't have to be a sexy calendar like this. Um, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be, but... Uh, <laughs> but if it is, that doesn't matter because, like I say, it is wiped clean. So... Um, <laughs> That. That's an improvement all round as well, isn't it, really? <laughs> I'll tell you what, there, there, we clearly have a lot more questions still to be asked. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep taking questions here in the venue while you take a quick commercial break. <laughs> <laughs>